Hello, my name is Anne Gritch, and I'm pleased to welcome you to this segment of the Oral History of the Diocese of San Jose. And with me this afternoon, and I'm delighted, is the Bishop of San Jose, Bishop P.J. McGraw. Welcome, P.J. Thanks, Anne. It's Thank you. good to have you here. Now, I was thinking to myself, Bishop, you were ordained in 1970. Correct. For the Archdiocese of San Francisco. Yes, I was. So you were 11 years in the Archdiocese when San Jose was, became uh, a diocese. Yes. Where were you and what was your sense when you heard the news? Uh, I was actually working in the tribunal in San, uh, in San Francisco. Uh, Archbishop Quinn was the archbishop and um, uh, he called me in and told me that the uh, county of Santa Clara was going to be cut off as the new diocese of uh, San Jose. And I must say I was uh, surprised and I remember saying to him, uh, can the archdiocese survive without uh, Santa Clara? At that time the archdiocese, though it was much bigger before, mm -hmm. but it, had, it was now down to four counties, Marin, San Francisco, San Mateo, and uh, Asia and Santa Clara. I thought erroneously that, 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 that we were giving away one quarter of the diocese. Oh. Later I found out it was half of the diocese. There's about the same amount of territory in this one diocese of San Jose as there is in all three uh, counties um, in the archdiocese. But the thing that really uh, shocked me was when the archbishop and our first bishop here, Bishop Pierre, decided that they would give a two-week possibility of priests moving from north mm -hmm. to south, south to north. That's very unusual. It is, and in fact, it's uh, kind of contrary to the law. So I was not happy because the person that I had picked out to be my uh, successor in the tribunal uh, and so it was my ticket out of the tribunal mm -hmm. back into a parish, he decided to move south oh. before he went for studies. We are about mm -hmm. to send him for studies. So I went up to the archbishop, knocked on his door, and I said, Archbishop, you cannot do this. You know, at the stroke of midnight, the Diocese of San Jose becomes the reality on that date. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, everybody remains in place. So whoever is in Santa uh, Clara County, they're in the Diocese of San Jose and vice versa. And the Archbishop, Archbishop Quinn, just looked at me and he said, sue me. So, <laughs> so I said, thank you, Archbishop, and left. And that's what happened. A lot of the older guys came from Santa Clara because they wanted to be with the old archdiocese. Mm -hmm. And then the younger guys, the new church, all of the things that were happening down here, the beginning of Silicon Valley, it was, the growth was down here, not in the north. Uh, well, most of it was down here. So they came uh, south and uh, it was quite a tsunami for the, uh, for the archdiocese, actually. Now, you decided to stay, obviously. Oh, yes, yeah, I did. <laughs> and, well, I was the judicial vicar sure. at the time and that would have been a cost celeb had I jumped ship <laughs> and come south. Now, how well did you know Bishop Dumaine? Well, I knew him, of course, when he was the superintendent of schools, schools mm -hmm. along with Sister Claude, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I, I knew him not very well. Mm -hmm. uh, Pierre, as we know, is a very private man. Mm -hmm. He's shy and uh, very, very bright, very erudite. So I knew him from different meetings, mm -hmm. and uh, Archbishop Quim was great for including uh, the auxiliaries. At that time, mm -hmm. we had uh, Bishop Quinn as well, yeah. Frank Quinn and Pierre. And uh, so I knew him in that context, but uh, not, uh, you know, uh, really well, mm -hmm. actually. Were you surprised when he was appointed to San Jose? No, I, it made perfect sense to me mm -hmm. because he was already in the Archdiocese. San Jose was cut off from the Archdiocese. He could really hit the ground running here because he knew the place. Well, we all knew uh, the place. We used to love 
uh, in San Francisco, if there was a meeting held down here, it was at the uh, uh, St. Joseph Seminary. Oh, yes. And we used to always say we were going to the country. <laughs> and it wasn't pejorative, it was just we loved it. It was to get come out to of the, the city. Exactly. <laughs> and um, so, no, it made, as I say, perfect sense mm -hmm. that Pierre would be the first bishop uh, here. And then you were ordained a bishop in? 19, I have always to think about the 1989. 89. Yes, uh, in okay. St. Mary's Cathedral, Saint Mary's Cathedral. Uh, San and Francisco, along with uh, Carlos, oh, Carlos Bishop Sevilla, Sevilla right. yeah, who's yeah. now back in our yes, diocese. Yes, he is, thank God, yeah. That's wonderful, <sighs> that is wonderful. And then it was June of 98 when you that were appointed, appointed here. the second bishop of San Yes, Jose. yeah, yeah. How, how was that? Well, when actually, it's in, interesting. Were you surprised? Or was there well, rumors? there were two dioceses open. Huh. Uh, one was uh, the Diocese of San Jose in California, mm -hmm. and the other one was Bismarck, North Dakota. And I remember saying to myself, uh, you know, I'll go wherever the Lord sends me, but if it could be San Jose in California, I'll be very uh, grateful and very happy. So I was at the meeting of the conference in Pittsburgh, and the nuncio uh, took me aside in the middle of the hall with everybody looking oh, sure. and spoke to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, I remember he asked me then, would I go to San Jose? I didn't even ask him if it was in Costa Rica or Puerto Rico or anything. I immediately said yes. Of course. <laughs> and um, when I walked away, Dan Walsh, the Bishop of Santa Rosa at the time, came up and said to me, he said, PJ, he said, I know you've got something. I don't know what it is but I know by your face that you're very pleased. And of course it was uh, San Jose, and I was, because 50 miles south of San Francisco, I didn't, you know, I had visions in Bismarck, I'm sure it's a beautiful place, but it would have winters like Ireland, mm -hmm. and I wasn't too keen on going back to snow and ice and all of that, so I was very, very pleased. And then when you came to San Jose, I thought it was absolutely wonderful. We had about 17 months where we had two bishops. That's right. Um, and you lived at Sacred Heart in, in Saratoga. Saratoga. I did. What were those 17 months like? I know you had a chance to see all of the parishes. Well, actually, when I came here and uh, was uh, coadjutor to Pierre, uh, Pierre actually wanted to retire within about four or five months of I coming here. Mm -hmm. And I begged him, I said, P please, Pierre, stay on one year. And reluctantly, he did. And I'm, to this day, grateful to him for doing that. Because it gave me an opportunity to go around the diocese, look at the parishes, visit the schools. And Pierre was still the bishop of the diocese. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a real gift to me to be able to do that. Uh, of course, I believe that the year that he gave was the calendar year. In August of that year, he said to me, he said, PJ, are you looking forward to taking over in, in November? I said, what are you talking about? I said, it's the 1st of January. He says, oh, I said, you said a year. He said, well, yes, he said, but of course, I meant the liturgical year, not the uh, calendar year. So I said, oh, I don't think so, I think. <laughs> but anyway, on the 27th of November, mm -hmm. 1999, Mm -hmm. At the stroke of midnight, right. I became the bishop and Pierre became the emeritus yeah, bishop. bishop yes. it was, but it was a lovely opportunity for me at that time because um, uh, even though I knew a lot of the people here, I knew a lot of the priests, not only from the time when we were part of the archdiocese, but I was teaching at the seminary uh -huh. up until uh, 1980. Uh, seven, I think it was. So I knew a lot of the guys who went through the seminary at that time and, you know, were ordained for, uh, for San Jose. Well, it was as smooth as silk. Yeah, transition. well, it, it really was, actually. We got, along, we got along very well. That's when I got to know Pierre in a very intimate way, mm -hmm. in a deep way, and he was always uh, very helpful to me. He has a very subtle sense of humor. I would go out and visit the parishes, and I'd come back here to this house for dinner. <coughs> Pierre loved to cook, and I'd be in the kitchen with him, and he'd be chopping and dicing and doing all this. And he'd say, well, where'd you go today? And I'd name the parish, and he said, and you know, how was I? I said, oh, great, and it was just wonderful. And he'd say, did they mention this to you? I said, no. 
And they said, and how about this? Do they mention it? No. <laughs> so he, he demythologized, you know, a lot of the stuff. This enthusiasm. Yeah, exactly, the <laughs> exactly. So it was, um, it was, it was a great uh, uh, time. He's a linguist, as you know, of course, and I lived in Italy when I was uh, there in the 70s, and I know some Italian, but Pierre, you know, because he knew that, he would uh, get a film, an Italian film, and after dinner we'd watch it. Well, he'd be laughing, and then like two minutes later I'd get the joke <laughs> and I'd laugh, because he knew, you know, he, he was really superb in <laughs> languages, all kinds of languages, yeah. but, um, but it was a very nice... Um, it was really a flawless transition. It was. And that's not true in some cases. Uh, sometimes there are difficulties with the, the incumbent bishop mm -hmm. and the coadjutor bishop, but uh, we had nothing we like had that at all. That, no. so what were your kind of hopes and dreams taking over as bishop? Having well, well, you know, you want to save the world. Of course. And then in the end, if you realize you can save yourself and a couple of others, you've done pretty well. But it was very... It was easy for me to come here in this sense. Pierre Domaine was truly a Vatican Council bishop. Yes. He, he took the council seriously. Now, I'm a Vatican Council priest to this sense. I went to the seminary in Ireland in 1964. Mm -hmm. The council ended 65, and I was ordained in 70. So I had one year of the old theology or whatever. Not that it changed, but the way the pedagogy and all of that mm -hmm. changed. So I have actually five years then of the Vatican Council. So it's not, it, it's not possible for me to go back to something that I really didn't know. Mm -hmm. The church that I know is a Vatican Council church. So uh, coming here then uh, to San Jose with uh, Bishop Pierre, uh, was really a, a gift because he had already, as all of you know, uh, set this diocese up from its very inception as a Vatican Council church. The model, you know, exactly. I mean the church is the church, but mm -hmm. uh, the model was really a, a Vatican II model. And so that fit in very well for me. I, I Well, and you fit in very it. well for us because there was a certain anxiety yes, on our was. part, you can yeah. imagine. We had, yeah. you know, Bishop Pierre got us off to a wonderful start, and yeah. is this going to continue? And thank God it uh, has, and grown. I uh, said one time to Pierre, I said, you know, we were having dinner in the tidy group, I said, everybody will remember the first bishop and the last bishop of San Jose. Nobody will remember the second. And of course, typical Pierre says, oh no, he says, remember, that the number two pencil is the most important pencil. <laughs> that <laughs> is that's such his, a Pierre. You know, his background, you yeah. know, teaching and exactly. you know, in education and that. So, uh, but um, mm. no, it turned out very, very, and he's been very supportive throughout the years. Yes. Uh, his health is not great now, but uh, when he first retired, uh, I would visit with him, and we would, I would go over things with him. We didn't always agree on everything, but I have to say, uh, to his credit and a great grace for me, uh, once we had dealt with the matter and left the room, we were both on the same page. Mm -hmm. He never ever uh, spoke ill of me or changes that I'd made. Now he'd often say to me, I don't think that's a good idea. And sometimes he was right and I was wrong, but... Sometimes it, he sometimes, was wrong right, and you and were I, right. Exactly. But to his credit, not even then did he say to me, PJ, I told you that was a dumb idea or whatever it is. He did not. So he has always been very uh, supportive of me, and that's a, that's a great gift, actually. And I'm, mm -hmm. I don't take that lightly nor for granted. I feel it was a real blessing. I'm thinking of some of the wonderful things that have happened since you, <clears throat> since you became Bishop. Well, we know the wonderful things under Bishop Pierre, but I'm thinking particularly remembering the um, confirmation at oh, yes. the <laughs> Shark Tank. <laughs> Shark Tank, yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I was just an amazing. What? How did that come about? All I I was working in the Chancery. Well, then. the idea was was that 2002 or what I was it? I think so. Well, it was there, and it was, it was around not the too long the after century. I took mm -hmm. over. 
but we um, uh, we wanted in some way to recognize and honor youth. Mm -hmm. So we thought it would be a good idea if you could bring all of the youth together for one big event. And then the idea came up of how about having one confirmation for the whole diocese. And then it was the, uh, uh, the arena, right. as that was mm -hmm. called at that time. And uh, John Pedigo was the one who organized it. And I remember afterwards, the people there said to me, they never had an event, at least up to then, that was so well organized. And the interesting thing is, you know, there was a baptism of where we got the water and brought, but the water had to leave the top of the stadium like three minutes before I left to go down. He had it coordinated wow. that, you know, everything arrived at the one time and worked out. But that was not just by happen chance, that was time to the mm -hmm. second. And it went off very well. It was a great gift for me because I went, I drove in and uh, got out, got vested, went into the arena, did the confirmation, got back into the car, drove home, and I was finished with confirmation for the whole oh, year. year. <laughs> <laughs> so it was uh, a real gift of that. But the big thing I think about it was the kids uh, got to know each other and uh, it, it was a kind of a, a small rally, if you mm -hmm. like. We confirmed over 2,000. Uh, young people mm -hmm. at that uh, at that confirmation. So no, it was a great uh, great moment, I think, mm -hmm. in the history of the, our local church. You also have been incredibly supportive of the Institute for Leadership and Ministry. Bishop Pierre had gotten it started, but it's when I came on board as the director. It was my first year. It was uh, the year that you were <coughs> co adjutor uh, and uh, you always were very gracious about serving as faculty and just very supportive. Well, and I think the Institute is one of the great things in this I diocese. I agree, and I'm always grateful to, well, to you as the director, but to Pierre for coming uh, up with this idea and putting it into place. And it was like, you know, Paul, one sets the seed, one waters it, it, and the <laughs> other reaps the harvest. I was the one who reaped the harvest yeah. because Pierre had already put it in place, and it was again it was one of his ways of putting into action the Second Vatican Council mm -hmm. and the place of laity in the church uh, today. And those were the things I had hoped to build upon, the foundations mm -hmm. uh, that were there and to continue uh, and add other things, but to continue to do that so that we would truly be a church that's in uh, you know, communication with the reality of life and the times mm -hmm. we find ourselves and to be able uh, to respond to people's concerns today and not just be giving answers that were given a hundred years ago. Yeah. Now the Catholic Foundation, you set that up. That I did. That came out of the pastoral plan and the plan, uh, well I like to plan for the future, even if we have to change the plan mm -hmm. as we move along, which you do because life is not static. Yeah. And um, that's why our plan is not uh, bound like a book. It's in a three uh, ring binder that you can whip out the pages and change it. And the people were great. When we had all of those meetings, uh, we would, uh, they came up with 400 and something uh, initiatives. I said, no way, we can't do 423 or whatever it is. So I asked them to reduce it to four pastoral issues and four structural issues. And, the, and they did. The pastoral youth, young adults, lay leadership, and the church's social justice teaching. Subsequent to that, we've added over the years liturgy and education. So there's actually six. And then the uh, structural one was uh, personnel, how we use the personnel in the diocese, the property, mm -hmm. what, how do we use that, communications, and then the zinger was uh, finances. Mm -hmm. It always is. Yes. Well, you, you, know, you hate to say it, but you have to have money in order to do things, do good things. So it became very clear to me, after meditating on it and praying about it, that unless we got our financial thing in order, we wouldn't be able to do any of the other mm -hmm. great things as well. So that led to the endowment capital campaign. And uh, uh, again, I'm very grateful, obviously, to the people. 
But I'm also grateful to the parish staffs, uh, the clergy and all the lay leaders who got behind that and made it a reality and made it work. Then the monies that came in, it was a smorgasbord of things that you could give to. <coughs> and the monies then that came in from that, uh, that's when we set up the foundation. Mm -hmm. So that the money would be handled by somebody other than me. Because mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that uh, the, um, uh, the desires, the wishes of the donors would be fulfilled and not just my wishes or my successors. Mm -hmm. So if I uh, would like a swimming pool in my back garden, I cannot take that money out of the... Uh, you have to uh, find another way to exactly. find it. Exactly. <laughs> I'll have to find another way to get it. But it was important because it's now, it, it's amazing what it has achieved over the years in the sense that I really truly believed that it would be my successor's successor, perhaps, who would see the benefit of this. But already they've given out millions in different ways to different uh, projects throughout the Diocese of San Jose. Mm. So it's really working very well, I must say. And we're, you know, it's uh, still in the stages of beginning sure. and we're continuing to grow it. And hopefully it will be, you know, uh, there forever and we'll be able to augment the uh, the budgets of uh, many of the offices and uh, and and also help parishes. There's areas there where uh, we help parishes. There's one part you buy, they'll buy, they, the foundation will buy the property for a new parish and then we build the church. church. Ah. And that happened at Our Lady of Refuge mm -hmm. where we bought a church but then the property was valued and the foundation paid for the property and then we had that kind of flash fire fundraiser went over a month or something and we were able to raise money for the building itself so that building then was paid off the whole thing bought land not so long ago uh, so in uh, 2016 last year for a new property a uh, new parish in uh, gilroy very much needed so it's there the property is there now when it will be built uh, we're still working on that and also for the high school in Morgan Hill mm -hmm. we have the property and it's paid for and we now will have to build the high school but it's a great benefit that's come out of the uh, the, um, the foundation yeah, absolutely I was thinking as you were talking too how wonderful it is in this it's a happy problem to have that we need to build parishes yes it is you know the Lord has a sense of humor he gives us this great challenge and then puts us in a place where land is astronomical, <laughs> you know. This high school we're building, back east they build the same thing, you know, for maybe 20 million. You know, ours is going to be 60 to 80 or whatever. But it's where we live. You pay for living in paradise. paradise. So <laughs> that's, the, that's the reality. Can you tell us a little bit about your relationships with... Um, other religious communities. I know there was a wonderful article in the Mercury not too long ago, well, maybe a couple of years ago now, oh. uh, about your um, relationship with Rabbi Dana Magat. Dana Magat. Um, but can you just talk about? Yeah, Dana is the, uh, he is the rabbi of Temple Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. He's a young man, and uh, we came to the valley around the same time, and we hit it off straight away. He's, uh, he's a very, uh, a very nice man, very enthusiastic. He has been uh, to our cathedral on several mm -hmm. occasions and he's read from the Hebrew scriptures for us. And I've been to the temple, Temple Emmanuel, on several occasions as well. So there's a real good rapport. When I was in Ireland, I had many friends uh, who were Jewish. And uh, so I... Uh, I know I uh, have some Jewish mothers myself, <laughs> and uh, when I would be sick, lots of chicken soup, soup. and all of that. So um, there's a I have a soft place in my heart for uh, for the Jewish community, and that was true in San Francisco. And I'm very pleased that it continued uh, here in uh, San Jose right to this day. Actually, we I was just talking with Dana today on the phone as well. So we and we. We really zero in on the things that we hold in common. Obviously, 
they're our elder brothers and sisters mm -hmm. in the faith and so we build upon those foundations uh, but uh, today we can uh, do a lot of things together social justice things yeah. and that's what we do and uh, I think we do very well in that so it is a great gift to, to me personally uh, but it's also a great gift to the diocese definitely, as well. Definitely, definitely. And what about the uh, larger community? I'm thinking of the civic leaders. Yes, I've had um, a good rapport with the, uh, with the, uh, with the city. Mm -hmm. uh, I have always found them helpful. I've always found them also, uh, the different mayors that we've had, uh, being able to speak with them. I remember Mayor uh, Gonzalez, mm -hmm. is, is it is Gonzalez, mm -hmm. uh, when we went through that horrific time during the sexual abuse uh, scandal, he was the first person to phone me uh -huh. and offer uh, you know, condolences and, you know, obviously we want to know what happened and that, but uh, it was very, uh, very supportive. The next person to phone me was Dana, actually, and then the other adjudicatories of other religions, the Christian religions, Muslims uh, as well, and uh, uh, so it's a great uh, support. But getting back to the, uh, to the civic, uh, yeah, uh, very, I must say, very supportive. The same is true with the district attorney's office, mm -hmm. the present one uh, as well, but pre his predecessors too were always helpful when I would phone and uh, they would meet with me and uh, uh, help me understand certain things that were going on. So it was, um, uh, it's Jeff Rosen now, yeah. but uh, he, his uh, predecessors as well were very, very helpful, I must say. So I've... Uh, you know, I've got good uh, feelings about the city and the county mm -hmm. and how they uh, are. We work together, I think, well. Well, I know one of the things that I've really appreciated each year is when we've had either the mass or evening prayer for um, the families or, and victims of violence. Yes, yes. Yeah. And I know um, the district attorney came. Yes, he does. And yeah, um, yeah. the uh, former chief of police came. That's right. Uh, Chris yeah. Moore. Yeah. I, so, no, they're very, very, very good, I must say, and, and both chiefs, the uh, police and fire department, mm -hmm. I've got good uh, rapport with mm -hmm. them and uh, try to support them and thank them for the work mm -hmm. that they do. We can sleep peacefully okay. in our beds because they're out in harm's way, may I say, yes. and both the police and the fire department with the things they mm -hmm. have to deal with every day. So I'm very supportive and very grateful to them. Well, and I think, too, we can feel proud as a diocese that we really have made some contributions to the city of San Jose. And I'm thinking about our cathedral, yeah. particularly the outreach yes. that happens there, what we do uh, during the Advent season with yes. all of the cultural arts yes, at yeah, the cathedral. Yeah. Um, it's a nice yeah, two-way street, yeah. I think. That's one of the wonderful things about a cathedral. I was rector of St. Mary's in San Francisco, mm -hmm. and really uh, we tried to emulate what happens in European cathedrals, mm -hmm. uh, where it's also a gathering place for the community and for art, mm -hmm. not only to display art, but to express art there too. And here we have the season of hope yes. uh, at the Christmas time. And wonderful and events. Yes, they are. And so it's lovely to see that the cathedral, this great house of worship, but that it is, uh, it's part of the community mm -hmm. as well, of all different religions. Mm -hmm. They're welcome. And uh, so I, I, uh, I'm really pleased that that happens here mm -hmm. in our cathedral as well. So any high points that kind of flash in your mind when you think of your time here? Well, when I think of my time here, I always think of the fact of how lucky and how blessed I've been. Uh, I don't know why that is, but uh, first of all, to be appointed here, and genuinely I would have gone wherever I was asked to go. But even Bismarck? Even Bismarck, and I'm sure Bismarck, Bismarck is, is a wonderful, wonderful place. But uh, too much like Ireland, maybe in the winter. <laughs> but uh, no, it's, um, I said when I came here, I was ecstatic. 
and it, I just didn't use the word, I really meant it. And that continues to this day, but it's all redounds really to the people. Uh, first of all, to Pierre, uh, all the people, the chancery, yourself included, the staffs at the parishes, the people in the parishes. It's an interesting experience here than San Francisco. San Francisco is wonderful, great city, lovely mm -hmm. people, uh, but they move a lot. I wasn't here long when I realized that families here have roots. Mm -hmm. They go back centuries here. And uh, that was kind of interesting to see, and I've enjoyed that throughout the years. Even though we're, you know, uh, our church here is bigger than our mother mm -hmm. to the north, uh, even the, the, we still have a kind of a very family uh, orientation mm -hmm. uh, as a church and uh, I enjoy that and uh, did when I came here and still do uh, to this day. So everything that I've tried to do has been uh, made possible by the great cooperation that I've received from and the input that I've received from, uh, from people, mm -hmm. and uh, I like that. I like the fact that we're all in this together. My motto is together in Christ, and it could be the motto of a coward, of course, as well, that you're hiding around behind a whole lot of other people. But my idea was that all of us have the one mission, and now the functions of the missions, how we do it, differ, but the mission is the same, to bring the good news of Christ to the ends of the earth, to show forth the face of Christ in our valley, all of those things. And I think we do that together as one big mosaic or a tapestry or whatever. And that's, uh, even to this day, it's exciting. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about our clergy? I think we have wonderful clergy in the well, Diocese yes. of San Jose. Uh, also, they are wonderful, they're also young. <laughs> Our average age is much younger than uh, other uh, places. Uh. Now we have challenges in the sense of language uh, challenges because we are a melting pot for all kinds of, uh, you know, it's like here comes the whole world in San, in, uh, San Jose Diocese. And with that, then there is the challenge of languages. So, um, that's one thing that we have to continually deal with. The other is vocations, of course, to get priests. And we do well, uh, but I, I won't say you're never satisfied. I'm pleased and grateful that God does send the ones that he sends, but we need even more. But the ones that we have, uh, we come from all over the world here. And uh, one of the reasons for these uh, sessions, that these interviews, is to give, uh, I believe, an idea to the priests who come in from other countries, like myself. I'm a, a refugee too. I came in here and was uh, greeted with open arms. Uh, but to give them also an understanding of who we are as a church here in San Jose. And, um, uh, but the priests that we have, a uh, great group of guys, great workers, uh, the uh, Elderly priests, I, uh, you know, when I think of them, I'm uh, just amazed at what they were able to accomplish and the foundations that they put in place that allowed then future generations of priests and laity to build upon. So we're blessed in, in uh, many ways. Talented uh, priests and religious here and lay people. So now we're, we're doing very I'm well. I'm thinking too of the retired fathers who give so much of their time <coughs> supplying at parishes or penance services in Advent and Lent. Yes. I mean, they, they don't really retire. <laughs> no, they do mm -hmm. not. And they're out there on walkers and wheelchairs mm -hmm. and all of that, and they're still involved. It's mm -hmm. uh, really uh, moving when you see that, that these people, yes, they technically they're retired, mm -hmm. but in fact they're very much involved in the life of the, of the diocese of the parishes. Bishop, one of the things that you did was to um, ask that the uh, permanent diaconate formation be um, established here in San Jose. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, I did. We didn't have it when I came here. 
And, uh, you know, the sacrament of holy orders, it's plural. Mm -hmm. It's uh, diacne priesthood and Episcopal uh, ordination. So I wanted to make sure that the diocese reflected that, that we would have deacons, permanent deacons. We would have priests, permanent priests, and we would have bishops, permanent bishops. So uh, up to that, the diaconate was the transitional diaconate, uh, which one had to receive before one was ordained a priest. And it has turned out to be a, gra a great gift uh, to the diocese. I was going to say, I believe, but it's not just me. I can see it in the diocese where they're able to, deacons are able to help in many ways that allow then priests to do other things. I had hoped that if deacons would be able to uh, give the sacrament of the anointing of the sick, that would have been a great gift to the, uh, uh, to the church. Um, and who knows, one day it may it happen, happen, yes. Yeah. And uh, so, no, it's, um, so I'm glad it took off, and, but I'm careful about it. You don't want a million permanent deacons no. either because they should have a mission, a ministry that is theirs and that uh, uh, they fulfill, but not just to make deacons for the sake of making deacons. Mm -hmm. I was also thinking one of the great blessings in our diocese is that we have three institutions of higher learning. Yes. one of which is Santa Clara University of Jesuit. Um, can you talk a little bit about your relationships with um, Stanford and San Jose State and, yeah. of course, Santa Clara? The, um, my relationship, let's talk about uh, Santa Clara. And my relationship with the Jesuits began way back in San Francisco, most especially with Archbishop Quinn and his relationship with uh, the university there. As and uh, Pierre had a great relationship with the mm -hmm. Jesuits in San Francisco. And then when he came down here, he formed that same relationship. So when I came down, it was a done deal. And uh, Paul Locatelli, the Lord of Mercy on him, Paul was the uh, president of Santa Clara at the time I came here. And I knew Paul from before. And we just worked hand in hand together as I do now with my gang. And we uh, were very helpful, I think, to each other. I have to say this of the Jesuits. Um, there's no, I can't think of anything I've ever asked them to do that they did not do. Mm -hmm. uh, and also things I didn't ask them to do, but they offered to do. So I am very grateful uh, to the society for all that they have done and continue to do for the Diocese of San Jose. And for me personally, they're very supportive of my ministry. They help me, they advise me on uh, different things. And I must say, uh, anytime we want anything researched, we uh, go there. The relationship with Stanford is also very strong. The Dominicans there have the, um, the, Newman, uh, the Center. Newman Center, mm -hmm. and so we're very uh, much involved with them, and through them, then, with the university itself. Mm -hmm. San Jose State is a little more, because the, uh, many of the students there are commuter students, mm -hmm. so we don't have we do have a Newman Center there, of course, so we have that group of people that we're in contact with. We're trying to um, build that up, uh, continuously trying to build it up more, but it's a little more uh, difficult because of the fact that the young people are on and off campus all the time, sure. so it's not that easy to uh, maintain a you know, an ongoing, it changes like every year, there's something we have to start again and to do things. But uh, no, it, but it's, a, again, uh, we help each other in any way that, mm -hmm. we, uh, that we can. I know Santa Clara has been wonderful with the uh, deacon formation program, because yeah. you know, we send the men there for their yes. uh, theology and they have just been incredibly supportive um, when we say this is what <clears throat> the uh, American bishops say, that 
has to be part of the curriculum. Okay, we can do this. Yeah. It's just been very. Well, that's been my um, my uh, dealings with them as well. As I said, I can't remember ever asking for their help when they didn't a hundred over a hundredfold uh, fulfill the the wish. So how fortunate we are in yeah, the Diocese no, really. of San Jose. It's just we are very, very blessed with many things. We have challenges, of course, like all churches. We're now uh, talking about the new evangelization. How can we make the church more responsive to the needs of real people today and maybe even bring back some of those that are alienated from I mean, Catholics, but alienated from the church. How can we bring them home, if you like? And uh, so, but that's exciting. You can never sit back and say, that's it, it's done, we're all set, there's always a challenge, and that's a good thing, mm -hmm. actually. And um, it keeps us uh, on our toes okay. and, and uh, working, so that's, uh, that's good. Well, Bishop, I'm very grateful to you for this time, um, and may we continue to grow and flourish. We most certainly will, and there's people like you and all of those that you represent today. And thank you, and thanks to all of the uh, people in the diocese. We're one family, and we move forward together. Amen. Together in Christ. Amen. Thanks, Anne. Thank, thank you. you.